Yep, just uh, you know, looking forward to to the game tomorrow against uh, Texas Southern, and uh, another opportunity for our team to come out and compete. And another day they don't have to practice. Eric, it's kind of unique. Uh, Johnny Jones hired you at, at LSU, and then a couple years later, you you, hi, you hired him at, at Nevada. Um, just how how interesting is that? How would you describe your all's friendship and relationship? Uh, you know, really unique uh, how the relationship started. Um, had an opportunity to go to Minnesota with the Timberwolves and Flip Saunders, and Flip had played for my dad and was coach part owner of the Wolves and it would have been you know really comfortable for me because I've known Flip for so long and Johnny called they called the same week actually um, had never met coach Jones uh, one of his assistants David Patrick who's now the head coach at Riverside w was a good friend of mine or is a good friend of mine and said hey just get on a plane to Baton Rouge at least come have dinner with us if nothing else it's you wasted a flight from from the Bay Area to to Baton Rouge, um, and I just, you know, really liked Coach Jones a lot, and sat down with the family, and we we, we wanted to stay on the path of college coaching, and so uh, passed up what could have been a really comfortable situation with the Timberwolves, and um, to go with Coach Jones, and it was awesome. He, you know, I learned so much about recruiting um, the year that I was there at at LSU, and so. Um, you know, he's he's a really good friend. My wife is really good friends with his wife. My daughter's good friends with their daughter. John Jones Jr. played for us for a year at Nevada. So, um, you know, and then it's, you know, it branches out. I mean, Derek Syak is on staff with Texas Southern, and, and Brandon Chambers was our ops guy at Nevada, and now he's an assistant coach there. So, um, you know, it's like an extended family now. Yeah, d d I mean, it just doesn't happen often, you know, where you're an assistant for a guy and then he's an assistant for you. But, um, you know, we had an assistant coaching spot open at Nevada, and I wanted to hire a former head coach again because Dave Rice got uh, an assistant's job with a lot better pay at Washington at the time and um, just kind of begged Coach Jones to come and help me, and and, uh, and he did, and it worked out for him. That kind of springboarded him back to a to another head job at Texas Southern, and obviously my time at LSU helped springboard uh, me to get a head job at, at Nevada. So, um, you know, I really respect him as a as an X and O coach. I respect him as a man, um, as a father. As you know, he's like a mentor to me, even though he was, um, you know, an assistant with us. Um, he's I look at Coach Jones as a mentor in a lot of ways. A chance to to hear Adriel and, and Mason's comments about you and the respect they have for you after the game the other day, uh, for how you are on the practice floor and, and how you are on the on the game court, and then how important is it to to get that respect early on uh, for these players and from these players? Yeah, I, I haven't. My wife made a comment the other day about um, you know how positive their comments were and. Um, you know, I think like with you know anybody in life, they just you know you just want consistency, whatever the <laughs> whatever that approach is. Um, you know, I think the key with with you know player coach relationship is that the you know that the player just thinks that that you're trying to help them become as good a player as they possibly can. Um, and certainly, you know that helps us become a better basketball team. The better that that our individual players become, and and with that comes getting them out of their comfort zone. Um, and so, you know, we do have intense practices, and obviously there's intensity during the game. But, um, you know, the players buy in one through every guy on our roster has been really phenomenal since since we've been here. You know, the, the last time I guess you and Johnny were in here together, you were on the LSU bench in that really wild game for the end of the 2015 season. Um, and Johnny, he laughed, but he said you, the fans here should boo you because you drew up that three-point shot that Hornsby <laughs> hit. Well, what, what do you remember about that game, and did you really drop the play? Just you know, oh. um, 
Yeah, it was. I mean, that game probably got us into the NCAA tournament, quite frankly. And, and um, you know, one of our better players was hurt. And um, it was a huge game for, for us, obviously. And um, Coach, I thought Coach did a great job that year of getting us ready to play in big games at West Virginia. We won a big game. And obviously here, two of the hardest places to win in college basketball. Um, so it was a big win. I might have had a suggestion about it, but <laughs> what's the the focus looking like for Texas Southern? What do they like to do? What are some things you might have to eliminate with them? Yeah, I mean, if you look at the roster, they have some uh, transfers that have played at big big programs. <laughs> Aiden Ewing played at Purdue, and uh, big jet throw inside played at Arizona State. He's an incredible shot blocker. His shot blocks per minutes off the charts. Um, they got a Texas A&M transfer. They got they got some guys that, that that are really talented. And I think the you know the biggest thing is just like another opportunity to play against somebody that we feel could win their league. Um, a, you know another program that's that's made NCAA tournaments of of late. And you look at their game at Baylor last year where they went into Baylor and won. Uh, you look at their game at Oregon where they won last year. Uh, we have to be ready to play uh, tomorrow night for sure. I guess uh, Ewing didn't play their last game. Do you know, is he hurt or do you know what his status is? Not really sure what his status is. Uh, he wasn't on the trip with them, but, um, you know, you got to prepare for everybody on their roster. And, you know, their point guard can score the ball. He's quick. He's crafty with the ball. They run a lot of pick and rolls. Um, so we have to have really good pick and roll defense as well. I guess they played in Wichita State very close. Did you, I mean, using that game as kind of a reminder to how good they can be? Yeah, um, you know, when we go through our preps today and film, we're going to stop the, the film throughout the course of what we're showing them where they can see the score on the bottom uh, for them to see how close Texas Southern played. And that's a, Wichita State's a hard place to play and a really good team. So certainly we have tremendous respect, and we know they're going to be ready to play. You said you'd update us whenever, but uh, have you made a decision on Reggie Cheney and playing this week, or will that be a game time decision? Yeah, um, you know, hopefully we'll be able to make a statement as early as tomorrow on uh, on Reggie's status and um, see how quick Mike can type. So, does that mean he's going to play? My, I mean, like I said, we'll we're going to make us, you know, we'll let everybody know. As, Okay. I don't know why he announced he's not going to play. I mean, <laughs> right. Um, okay. Uh, hey, John Jones. We might. You? I mean, yeah, you never yeah, know. Yeah. Uh, you, you had him. You had him at 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 Nevada. Uh, what what uh, what kind of player is John Jones? Johnny's son. Yeah. I mean, obviously, we had him when he was a freshman, and um, you know, he can really shoot the ball. He's got deep range. He's a really confident player. Plays kind of a combo guard. Can play the one or the two. Um, but he can shoot the basketball for sure. I mean, and he's got deep, deep range, so we've got to make sure we do a good job of not losing sight of him. We've done a good job defending the three-point line. Certainly with, with John Jones, Jr., we have to make sure we do that as well. And then, uh, Johnny said he really didn't enjoy playing friends, but that I guess the hoop group or whatever the company is called put this, you know, did this event together, matched up you guys. You know, it's a good game for them. It's good money for them. They have to play a lot of these guarantee games. Well, what are your thoughts about playing, uh, you know, a friend? Um, I'd prefer not to. You know, um, you know, Friday we got Todd Lee coming in, and Todd and I, you know, Todd worked with us with the Rapid City Thrillers way back, and was an assistant at University of San Diego, so I met him many years ago, but. Uh, a lot of the schedule is already done. Um, we didn't, you know, we didn't schedule uh, Texas Southern, and uh, and we didn't we didn't schedule uh, South Dakota because um, those guys are friends, and and I would just prefer, you know, to play somebody else. Um, but you know, the good thing is when you do play a friend, when the game is over, you're able to exchange ideas and thought processes and. Uh, the Montana staff, they have some guys on staff that are f really good friends of ours, and 
uh, some guys from the Bay Area that were able to kind of give them feedback on what we saw with their team. And, and they gave us some great feedback on our team that, that kind of gives us a view or, or, or from a lens of an opponent and what they're trying to take away from us. And certainly um, when we're done playing Coach Jones, uh, on Wednesday, we're going to share ideas with their staff for sure. And, and, and I know come Saturday when we're done playing, uh, Coach, Coach Lee's team will certainly share ideas. So I think there is some benefit to doing it because certainly I want Coach Jones to win every game possible other than Tuesday night. And the same thing with South Dakota um, after our game with them on Friday. You know, obviously San Diego State was in your, your old league and they had to play there too. Even though they're 0-3, they've played three pretty tough teams at their place. How prepared do you think they are to come in here when they've already played three road games? Yeah, I think because they play so many road games in non-conference, because they play in so many uh, big buildings and they play in front of good crowds, they're kind of immune to it. Um, the guys that played last year know the euphoria. You know, they know the type of excitement uh, that they can have with a big win. So. Um, you know, I don't think that they'll be phased at all. It's, 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 it's a team that understands every year that they're going to play a lot of these non-conference games like this. So um, that's what makes them scary as well. Maybe expect a bounce back game from Isaiah just shooting the ball and you don't figure that'll linger much longer. Yeah, no, I mean, it was some, you know, some of our guys, we want them to look at clips of, of uh, you know, maybe all their misses they've had. Not just one particular guy, but we've we've done that with three or four guys where they get to look at some of their shots that they've made, some of the shots that they've missed, try to figure out, you know, is are they missing long, are they missing short, missing right, missing left, are you shooting it off the bounce, or are they catching shoots, how close was the defense to you uh, on your shot attempt. So all those things we're constantly trying to evolve as a staff with our guys and with our individual players. Um, when a guy misses, you know, has some misses on a particular night, um, to build their confidence up and, and kind of for them to, you know, self-diagnose their own game. It's like a major league baseball hitter going in the back if he if he strikes out and taking a look at his at bats. It's the same thing we want with our guys, um, you know, when they go through certain shooting slumps or off nights or whatever you want to call it.